Hello learners, today in this class we are going to discuss about the teacher met test. By the name teacher met test you are very well aware of about how the test is going to be. What I feel is you are very much aware about the continuous and comprehensive evaluation in your class in your schools. So, from that point of view, every day you are to constantly assess and monitor the performance of your students. So, while teaching in a class, very often you use this assessment process and assessment levels of learning of each and every students of your class. This is very important for you to know the, what the students have performed after your teachings. So, these tests are essential for making the assessments in more continuous and comprehensive evaluation specially. Some of you might have developed and used several such teacher met tests in your classroom to assess the students progress on various occasions. This test if not well conducted or not well prepared may not give you the acquired result or what you require or to see in the students learning outcome. So, let us look at some of the functions of teacher met test here to reflect on the day to day teaching learning activities of the school. Dear learners, this is your important activities in your class. Every day you teach many things to the students relating to different subjects, but whether they have learned it exactly what you have taught or at least 70 to 80 percent of the learning outcomes you want to see then you need to have this test in your hand every day to develop more efficient teaching learning strategies. This teacher met test will help you how much you have also performed in your teaching learning process or whether you require more efficient knowledge or teaching strategies in your class. To know the ability of the students, so this test ultimately is going to help you to know the different abilities of the students. So, by knowing the abilities of the students, the teacher may be at an advantage position from different ability groups. Lastly, to diagnose the students strengths and weakness and this is going to help the teacher to plan the compensatory or what we call as the remedial classes in enrichment of the programs. So, this last objective is very very important and very unique in nature to know the strength as well as the weakness also. Strength after conduct of the examination we will come to know and at the same time the weaknesses where the students are lacking behind that also we will come to know. So that you can prepare your compensatory classes or the remedial classes for the enrichment of your classroom programs. Now learners let us come to know about some of the very important characteristics of teacher met test. The first characteristic of teacher met test is the direction for administration. In teacher met test, no uniform directions are specified. It directly depends upon the teacher who uses and applying it. Secondly, learning outcomes and sampling of contents. In the teacher met test, it is adapted to outcomes and the contents of local curriculum. The classroom teacher decides the quantum of content to be covered for a particular test. Thirdly is the construction of teacher met test. It depends upon the classroom teacher and his capacity often prepared the blueprint, less go for item analysis and try out of the test items. Fourthly, the frequency of the use of teacher met test. In the teacher met test, it depends upon the purpose of the test to be served. Fourthly is the purpose to provide feedback function as a learning exercise motivates the students to develop good study habits. And lastly the use of the teacher met test. In the teacher met test it is the score comparison and the interpretation limited to the particular school not for comparison with other schools which is best suited for measuring particular objectives set up by the teacher. The teacher should know how to plan, how to construct and how to use the test they prepare for getting true and accurate information regarding the learning outcomes in respect of his or her students. Otherwise, a test construction which is done by the teacher 
casually may not serve our purpose and relying on the outcomes of such tests would be useless and sometimes it may be harmful for the students learning. Now what is the important question that arises in our mind is what are the contents of a test. So a test comprises of some components of some information regarding the testing events like the annual, the terminal, the half yearly or the monthly test, the class for which it is meant and the total time duration usually in hours for giving complete responses to the students and lastly what are the maximum marks or scores allotted for the test. Now why questions are called items? Have you ever thought that we call the questions are items and what are the reasons of calling them not as questions or items? Take a look at the chart very carefully dear learners. Here I have given four examples of items. These items differ from each other. For example, if you see the first item, this is in the form of question like what is the name of the capital city of Bangladesh? Let, at last I have put a question mark here. In the second question, give three reasons for the outbreak of the disease called cholera. Then the third one is within the brackets you are to justify that is poverty is not the only reason for high illiteracy rate you are to justify. And the last one is the longest river following in India is put a dash this is a fill up the gap question types. So in this chart you will notice that the first item is in question form and the second one is in, in the affirmative sentence. Third one is a negative sentence and the fourth one is an incomplete sentence. All these are not the questions but they do serve the purpose of testing. So each of these questions are that is why called as the items because they are fulfilling the purpose of what you want to know the information what your students have learned. Now let us know about the different categories of test. There are different categories of tests that we call as the objective test. Take a look at this chart that I have prepared again for you. The first one is your objective test. In this objective test, all the items are of objective net nature. Either it is a giving tick mark type or taking out the right option type or fill up the gap type. This is in objective form and that is why this is called as the objective item or the objective test. Second one is your essay type test. This is by the name we know that each of the item in this test is either an extended response type or a restricted response type. Again the tests are of three types based on the mode of responses to the items in the test. These are oral test, written test and the performance test. These three tests are of different nature but these three are very important in teacher met test. In the oral test the answer to each item of this test is given orally. Here the teacher if they want to know immediately the feedback or the learning outcome of the students they can immediately adopt this oral test and they ultimately comes to know what the students have learned. Such type of items are very often used in the beginning years of the primary schools and also when a quick estimate of students understanding of a concept is needed to be checked. Specially oral test is adopted by the teacher during the second part that is the presentation step of the lesson plan because in this preparation and presentation step teacher immediately wants to get the feedback from the students. So written test next is your another very important time and very commonly used teacher met test. Answer to each written test item is given in writing form or is also called as the paper pencil test. Everyone is familiar with this written test as it can be used in nearly all the occasion. This written test fulfill the purpose of any category of the knowledge that a teacher wants to know from the students. Lastly is the performance test. The name signifies that it is not related to either oral test or written test. This is something on the performance of the students. When answer to each item requires the student to do some activities like measuring a length, weight, capacity, drawing a figure, 
painting, dancing, arranging the blocks to produce desired design, preparing models, etc. So, this performance test is the best test which can be adopted by the teacher. So, development of understanding, skills and creativity can best be assessed by using this type of test. Now, let us know about how to construct a good test. In this regard, I have prepared a chart for you which duplicates a story regarding how to construct a good test. This is Miss Nandita who is teaching in the upper primary classes. She thinks that a good test should serve the intended purposes of learning the subject or the units or a particular topic that has been taught by the teacher. While her another colleague, Mr. Prakash, he is of the opinion that the test is good if there is no ambiguity in the test items and are clear for each student. Another teacher, Mr. Amin, he feels that the test is to be good if it can be scored without any bias and the results can be easily and meaningfully explained to the students and their parents. What Ms. Nandita, Ms. Mr. Prakash and Mr. Amin thinks are the characteristics of good test for the teacher who uses the test. Therefore, a test must be constructed meticulously so that it would fulfill the characteristics of good test. Let us take the three opinion of these, these three teachers and write it on the blackboard just to clear up our concept. According to Ms. Nandita, the quality or the characteristic of a test is to learning the outcome, learning of the topic or the subject this is the characteristics of a good test according to miss nandita according to mr prakash he was of the opinion that a test should be um, without having any ambiguity so from him we got the quality of a good test is no ambiguity The third opinion we have got from Mr. Amin. He was of the opinion that a test or a good test must be bias free or having no biasness. Dear learners, these three are the three different opinions given by three different teachers teaching at various different levels. If we summarize the three different opinions given by three different teacher, we come to know about the various characteristics of the teacher met test. Let us look at what are those characteristics of a teacher met test. So the first characteristic is that planning of the test. This planning of the test is very important for a teacher to conduct the test on the students. A test without having no plan or a test which is conducted casually cannot give the teacher the desired result or a teacher cannot get the learning outcomes of the students properly. That is why a test has to be already planned and nicely prepared by the teacher. The second characteristic of a good teacher met test is the preparing of the test. The preparation of the test is a very important part on the side of the teacher. The teacher has to prepare the test by knowing on which level the teacher is going to prepare the test. Secondly, how the teacher is going to prepare the test, what are the qualities of the test and what are the different items that will be placed regarding the preparation of the test. Thirdly is the tryout of the test. Under the tryout of the test, there are two different trials. Firstly is the preliminary tryout and secondly is the final tryout. In the tryout characteristic of the test, the preliminary tryout would help the teacher to know whether actually that test which he is going to adopt on the students will work on them or not. The final tryout ultimately gives the final result to the teacher. 
Lastly is the evaluation of the teacher. Evaluation of the test is again one of the very important and good characteristic of a test. The test that has been prepared by the teacher has to be evaluated and again re-evaluated by the test because the teacher must know whether the test that has, he has prepared for the students will ultimately work on them or not or the teacher has to see always the critical value of the test. So dear learners, today we have come to know about the characteristic of a good teacher met test and why the tests are called as the items not as the test and what are the good qualities of the test. See you in the next class. Thank you very much.